So please help me out and let me know if you can read here empowerment and choice map. Can you read that? Okay. So this is the empowerment and choice map. You find that in the handbook. Um, can you find that in the handbook? Well, I will, I will post it in the group. So we most in life, we are either a giver or a receiver. Each one of us is in one of these two roles. And when you are in one role, by definition, the other person is normally in the other role, in the raw format of that. So normally what we all think that the giver is the person who is in action. And I think that this is a misconception where somatic consent is cleaning up with because it's only partly true. So that instead of going into an action as the giver, when we know that choosing is more important than the action, we are already on the path into empowerment. And can you, can you see the, the changes in the, in the graphics that I'm doing? Can you see that? Okay, so it's, it's happening. I wanna make sure that you see that. So then you're on the road of empowering others already when you know that choosing is more important than what you do or what the action is. And that's why somatic consent in my understanding is so powerful because it divides the action not only into the giver so that empowerment goes into this direction as the giver when you use this dynamic of somatic consent and you give them this magic formula that they just have enough time and safety that is a part of that that they can notice trust value and communicate what their desire is and what they want. That's your number one feature of empowerment, of empowering others and being empowered. So when this is in place that the other person, the receiver can um, uh, um, notice trust value, communicate what their desire is and what they want, then they can ask the question, can you? or can I? So where the, where the request is in place. And when that has happened, then the giver has to go through the same dynamic. They just need enough time and safety to notice trust value and communicate what their limits are and what they're willing to. And then they communicate that, yes, I can do that, or yes, you can do that. So then, and that's the last step, then it comes either to the action of the giver because the receiver asks, hey, can you do such and such? And then you say, yeah, I can do that. Or no, sorry, I'm not willing to do that, I'm not available. Or the receiver asks the question, can I do such and such? And then the giver as well, yeah, you can do that for yourself. I'm okay with that. So because when you know how to choose and when you know how choosing goes, there are a gazillion things you can ask for what you want. Okay. Brought that down again into the somatic consent engagement system. There's this little box. And in this little box, there's more to this box, but I don't put that now out here. But in this little box, there is either your action and your action, it is for you. Yeah, what you desire is and what you want. And this is pretty much based on the sensory inflow so that you actually can reach out and feel yourself with other people. Or it is your action 
and it is for other people what they want. So either your action is for you or your action is for them. Either or, which one it is, is defined by the agreement that you have. Or it is their action. And that's the same dynamic. Their action is either for you or it is for them. All right. Um, that goes further. I want to leave it here as it is. But that you're just getting the metrics of this dynamics. As you are, now the system is a little bit more um, broader, but when you get this as the metrics that, and let's go back here, that your action and it is for you is based on the sensory inflow to know how to touch and feel and connect with other people by the very simple question, may I feel you, can I touch you? Am I allowed to lean my head against your shoulders? Is it okay if I hug you? Yeah, so it doesn't matter which one you choose to create the agreement. 